You're listening to CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and how we do it, call toll-free 1-866-928-3310. And we'll send you out a no-obligation information kit absolutely free. 866-928-3310. The CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast is now on Stitcher. Listen to us on your iPhone, Android phones, BlackBerry, and WebOS phones. Stitcher is smart radio for your phone. Find it in your app store or at Stitcher.com. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. Are you ready, Steve? Uh-huh. Yeah, Bert. Well, all right, fellas. Well, it's got You're listening to CFRN, the Christian Financial Radio Network. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Over 85,000 titles. Choose from mystery, romance, religion, science, technology, business, New York Times bestsellers, even children's books. You name it, Audible has it. With 85,000 titles to choose from, you're sure to find the perfect audiobook for yourself or to give as a gift, and it's absolutely free. Just point your browser to audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. That's audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. And become a part of the audiobook revolution by downloading your free audiobook today. audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Hey, trader, want to get rich quick? Well, good luck with that. If, on the other hand, you actually want to learn how to trade, the place to be is www.cfrn.net. Tune in Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern, for our daily devotional, and then spend the next three hours learning how it's done from professional traders who actually trade for a living. That's www.cfrn.net. Every trading day from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. Good afternoon, traders, and welcome back to the CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast. This is the daily broadcast of Indeterminate Length, where we discuss all things E-Mini, along with some really big ideas on the finer points of trading gold, bonds, crude, sugar, the euro, and even T-bills. Joining us today from our studios in Boston, Mr. Michael Bork. From our trading desk in Chicago, Mr. Burton Schlichter. Now, to get things started, let's go to our host and founder in Studio A, overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Here's Dwayne. Good afternoon. Welcome back. Today is Wednesday, the 18th day of July, 2018. Hope you're having a a great day, whoever you are and wherever you are. Thanks for joining us. If you're returning, let me say welcome back. If you happen to be here for the very first time, let me extend a very special and warm welcome to you. We are glad to have you with us. If you can't see the chart I have up, it's the S&P 500. Go to our homepage at CFRN.net. On the right-hand side of the page, click the big microphone, follow the instructions, You'll be registered through the end of the month. You'll have one click access to the show each and every day. And you only have to register once per month. Also, if the GoTo software lets us down, you can always pick up the redundant dual stream at youtube.com slash CFRN slash live. While you're there, bookmark the page. This way, you'll always have one click access all right excellent now let's take a look this is our 
highest weekly trading zone from last week. 2825 slash 26. This week we have one zone higher than that. And I think I'll probably share it with you during the show today. We don't normally do it until Thursday, but hey, what the heck. The United Kingdom, of all places, is in a good position to become a leader in the crypto economy and the implementation of blockchain technologies, according to a report in the British press. Britain has all the required resources, as well as governmental and industrial willpower to become a global hub for the technology by 2022. Now the analysis was done, so take, take it with a grain of salt. The analysis was done by the Big Innovation Center. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's their name. Uh, DAG Global and Deep Knowledge Analytics. Now the gap between the traditional financial system and the crypto economy in the UK will close the CEO at DAG Global says the UK is a major global financial hub and in recent years has become a fintech leader as well. At the same time, it is starting to demonstrate significant potential to become a leader in blockchain technologies and the crypto economy. The research carried out in coordination with the parliamentary group on blockchain has taken into consideration a 650 million worth of investments into UK blockchain companies that were made in 2017 and so far in 2018. And they arrived at the conclusion the United Kingdom has the potential to become a world leader in the digital and crypto ecosystem within the next few years. Uh, the CEO at the Big Innovation Center I said we are still at the early stages of the blockchain industry's development and the huge impact it undoubtedly will have in Britain and globally. The financial regulators of Jersey, one of the Channel Islands, not New Jersey, I guess this is the old Jersey, has taken measures to protect investors participating in initial coin offerings. In a guidance note released this month, the Jersey Financial Services Commission provided some basic definitions of cryptocurrencies, digital tokens, and token sales. They're catching up with the U.S. Malta, which we've talked about quite a bit, another crypto-friendly European destination, has reportedly acquired its first two-way automated teller machine exchanging cryptocurrency with fiat. Last week, a company called Moon Zebra launched the ATM located at the Quicklets offices on Tower Road in Salima. It operates Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. Now, the new ATM offers users the opportunity to buy and sell two cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, BTC, and Litecoin, LTC. Moon Zebra claims this is the first device that offers two-way transactions with cash. Another teller machine supporting purchases of cryptocurrency strangely disappeared last year. According to sources, two other devices are also operational, but not far from Moon Zebra's ATM, but both are buy-only machines. One of them offers BTC and the other offers both BTC and LTC. Now, the launch of this new ATM comes after the island nation took another step towards becoming one of the most crypto-friendly nations in Europe. Recently, the parliament in Valletta adopted three laws designed to introduce clear regulations for the country's growing crypto industry. It's been reported that the largest crypto exchange by trade volume, Binance, is considering a project to launch a decentralized bank in Malta. The favorable business climate has attracted other large crypto businesses to the island, including the Chinese exchange OKEX and the Polish BitBay. In Hong Kong, the Indonesian startup 
Pundi X is working to build a network of 5,500 point of sale terminals in Hong Kong supporting payments in a number of cryptocurrencies according to the South China Morning Post. The devices will be able to connect not only to crypto wallets but also with other traditional payment methods like Visa, MasterCard and Apple Pay. The lines are really starting to blur, aren't they? Now, according to the Pundiac CEO, Hong Kong is the ideal place to test the payment network. His company has ambitious plans to introduce up to 100,000 crypto POS terminals in Southeast Asia by 2021. Recently, a chain of restaurants in Hong Kong installed crypto point of sale devices in partnership with the Indonesian startup Pundiex claims that in the last six months, 25,000 of its terminals have been ordered by businesses in Japan, Singapore, South Korea, and Switzerland. So there's a bit of crypto news. Let's take a look at the numbers around the world. Now these will be the cash markets, not the futures. We'll talk a little more about the futures momentarily but let's get a read on the global markets on the indices looks like the Dow is currently up 88 points Nasdaq is down 3 S&P 500 is up 6 the Russell 2000 is flat no movers no shakers a little green little red big stay here in the US in the commodity basket crude oil is down a penny trading 68.07 last. Gold down 90 cents, trading 26.20 last. In the Asian markets at the closing bell, Nikkei was up 96 points, Shanghai was down 10, and the Hang Seng down 64. And in the European markets, the FTSE at the close 49 points, the DAX 104, and the CAC added 24. No movers, no shakers there either, although the DAX came pretty close to an increase of 1%. Sure. Yes. I know you're going to kick it to me in just a minute, but somebody just showed up at my door. Give me five minutes, okay? Okie doke. Again, the European markets uh, all green. Uh, the DAX turning in the best performance off 100 points on the session almost one percent so all green in europe mixed in asia and here at home uh we're mixed due well russell's fighting with the zero line and the nasdaq is down almost seven points but the now, like we always say the nasdaq dances to the beat of a different drummer in fact the Nasdaq might be the different drummer. But the Dow turning in a relatively strong performance of 88 points. Okay. This thing with Trump and, and Putin, I mean, it's become... It's not comedic because it's not funny. I haven't laughed once. Uh, ridiculous. Perhaps that's a better, better term for it. After facing bipartisan criticism, President Trump said yesterday that he misspoke on Monday. I, I've misspoke before. Have you ever misspoke? We've all misspoken. When he appeared to side with Russian President Vladimir Putin on the question of whether Moscow tried to interfere in the 2016 presidential election. After his summit with Putin in Helsinki, Helsinki, how about that? Trump said, I don't see any reason why it would be Russia that hacked Democrats during the campaign. Trump said he should have said he didn't see why it wouldn't be Russia. Sort of a double negative. Trump said he accepts the conclusion of U.S. intelligence agencies that Russia tried to meddle in the election so you can't put that in, he said. And I think that probably clarifies things. Democrats called Trump's statement a transparent 
and weak bit of damage control. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. I mean, is it is it really such a big deal? Former President Obama yesterday made his highest profile speech since leaving office, urging people around the world to preserve causes the late South African leader Nelson Mandela fought for, democracy, diversity, quality education for all. Obama spoke in Johannesburg as South Africans marked the 100th anniversary of Mandela's birth with clinic openings and charitable acts. While Obama did not mention President Trump by name, his remarks were seen as a thinly veiled rebuke of his successor. Obama speaking a day after Trump's cozy summit <laughs> with the Russian president decried the rise of strong man politics and the utter loss of shame. Okay, now, I'm back. You're back. The political leaders who lie to their constituents saying that those in power seek to undermine every institution or norm that gives democracy meaning. Wow. Go Obama. All right. You ready to take it? I am. I am ready to take it. Here's Michael. And he's going to do a recap of what happened in the live training room today. And when yes. he's done, I'll be back to chat with John and more. So, all right. Let me... Now, I rearranged my screens, which is a bit discombobulating. And not that I think it's going to fix our problem, but hey, you never know. You did we'll something. Try, we'll try most anything at this point. Um, this juncture. Okay. Just, a, just a mystery. A huge, huge mystery. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. Hmm. Go ahead. All right. Here we go. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Wednesday, the, the 18th day of July 2018. Um, today, today, in the, um, <laughs> first, if you have not taken a free trial with us, go to the homepage here at CFRN.net. And right over here where it says five day free trial, click on that. It says apply.cfrn.net. Or you can click down here where it says free five day trial or right here. That's going to bring you to another page where you got to click one more time. Um, and they all eventually bring you to this page here. Okay. We're all, all, all we ask for is your email, your first name, and how you found us. Hit that submit button and you'll be sent to confirmation link. Okay. Now, um, I'll go over the recap really quick. Uh, we only had two trades this morning, okay? We only had two trades, and we got nine ticks on the euro. I'm not on euro, but nine ticks on crude. So it ended up being a yellow day. I should have grabbed 10 ticks on that crude, but I dropped my stop, and it took me out right away. Um, so we didn't get the goal for the day, but we did end positive, and we only had two trades today. So on the month now, we're at 1223. That's over 12 days, averaging 101 per day. On the year now, we're at 20,502. That's over 129 days, averaging 158 per day. Okay, 158 per day. Um, all right. Uh, let me move this over to here. And oh, no, I was going to do the spreadsheet. I just did the spreadsheet. So let's go over what didn't happen today. Okay. Here's gold. And we did not get a single trade set up in gold until way over here. And we missed it right there. We didn't get filled on it. Um, during the break, it looks like looks like there was a bounce off the BBC right here during the break that did not work out. Um, there's not a bounce here because we don't have the proper divergence. Okay. Um, the euro. Nothing here in the euro. Nothing there in the euro. I thought we were going to get a trade set up in here, but we didn't end up getting it. Uh, that was when the room was, uh, yeah, no, the slingshot was just not giving anything up. Um, we didn't get a single trade set up in the euro. Okay, crude oil is where we did get some trade setups. Um, and these should be a little bigger. We rolled to U contract today in crude, All right? We rolled to the U contract in crude oil today. Those should be a little bit bigger. Um, on this first one right here, we picked up two ticks. On this one, we picked up seven ticks. We missed these two right here. 
Okay. I just wasn't looking at my charts. That's why I missed them. Um, and it got really choppy. We did have the crude inventories come out today. You can see in here, this is when the crude inventories came out. Big mess. Big mess. But prior to that, we didn't have a single trade set up in crude. Okay. Once the inventories came out, it gave us a little bit of volatility. And then during the break, looks like there was a long trade right there, another long trade right there. And it looks to be setting up a short trade right now. Okay. Um, the ES, well, let's just have a look at that. Hang on. There we go. All right. Um, the ES bounced up to the zone, came off the zone down here like this, uh, then just started pushing sideways. Okay. It started to look like a trade set up here, but it was going right into the zone. Uh, right here, it would have given a long trade setup right in here, but I would not have taken that so close to the zone. I don't like trading when it's really close to the zone like that. Okay. Um, can somebody type in a Y or an N or if you hear me okay? Because I want to post the link. I'm going to do my, my normal Tuesday meeting that I do. I am doing this afternoon at 1.15 p.m. Okay. Thank you, Alan. Um, I'm going to do it this afternoon at 1.15 p.m. Okay, I couldn't do it yesterday because I had to. I I had to buy a car. Okay, that's the link to get into that meeting at 1:15. Everyone is invited. Anyone who wants to go is invited. I'll probably start the audio at 1:20. Okay, but anybody that wants to go is invited. Um. Go back to the spreadsheet again. If you're going to read the spreadsheet, you read all the CFTC risk disclosures down at the bottom. Uh, today is the 18th day of July 20, 2018. We took two trades, both in crude today, to get nine ticks. We're at plus 90 at the end of the morning session. Um, on the month now, we're at 12.2375. That's over 12 days, averaging $101 per day. On the year, we're at 20,502. That's over 129 days, averaging $158 per day. Okay, $158 per day. Um, Yes, here. If you have not taken a free trial with us, just go to the home page here where it says five day free trial. Click on apply.cfrn.net or down here where it says free five day trial. Click that. That'll bring you to this page. Start free trial. Click on that. And that'll bring you to this page. Okay. All links eventually bring you to this page where all we ask for is your email, your first name, and how you found us. Hit the submit button. <clears throat> yes, it's Eastern time, Roy. It's Eastern time. Um, <clears throat> Hit the submit button and you'll be sent a confirmation link. Okay, you must click on the confirmation link. Once you click that confirmation link, then we know you took the trial. And then we can react to knowing you took the trial. Okay? All right. Now, again, that meeting, I'll paste the link in here one more time. Um, that's 1 15 p.m. EDT with Michael. Everyone's invited. Okay. I'll probably start the meeting up a little after, a uh, little bit after one, but I'll, I'll wait until about 1.20 for the audio. Okay. <clears throat> and if you have any questions, uh, you can ask them. If you go into the handout section right now, we'll go to webinar. I just loaded a file in there that looks like this. Looks like this. This is what I'm going to be going over in that meeting. Okay, that's what I'm going to be going over in that meeting. So, if you want to download it so you can have it to go over while I'm going over stuff, go right ahead. All right. All right. With that, I'm going to pass it back out to Studio A in fabulous Phoenix, Arizona, Old Lincoln, South Mountain, America's largest city park. Dwayne, if you are ready. Yep. Here we are. I know moving the screens did not fix it. So huh. it did it did turn screen two into screen one somehow. Oh boy. Alright. Well sounds like you gotta run. <clears throat>
Yeah, we got the we got the meeting coming up, and I got stuff I got to do before the meeting. All right, buddy. Well, John's gonna be here in a minute, but I don't think he's not here yet, is he? Uh, let me go check. I just let me go check. Yeah, he is. is he? Okay, if you can yep. open his mic as your parting yep. shot, that'd be great. I appreciate it. There it goes. He's open. Hey, John. Welcome to the show. Hello. How are Hi you? Hi there. Not too bad, thanks. Yeah, um, <clears throat> uh, look, uh, this is a very important day today because. <clears throat> I actually just tweeted out a short while ago that I thought the dollar is topping out in the same way that it did back in January 2016, a few days into the new year. And this is, if the, if I'm right, which I think I am at the moment, uh, it could catch everybody out because, you know, almost everybody seems to think the dollar is going a lot higher. And this is kind of what it was back in January the 2016, right before it tanked. And <clears throat> it's, you know, uh, the f when I came in this morning, uh, the first thing that I noticed was that platinum was up, or not up, rather, it was um, off the lows. It didn't make a lower low overnight. The gold and silver did, but only fractionally. And ever since then, and the copper. And so uh, the metals have been kind of catching a bid this morning in a way that they, I mean, they really haven't been catching a bid for, for quite a while. And they caught a bid this morning and the, the behavior is definitely different and it's definitely more positive. And, you know, I would say if we, you know, we took out a, a previous high here a short while ago on the silver, that's a good sign. Um, interim high this morning if we get above 20 12 27 and a half sort of back towards 12 30 and the silver back up towards 15 60 70 it'll, it'll start looking pretty good on the chart and you know why am i saying this because look you, you know these bottoms a bottom like this is very similar to uh the 2015 December bottom in gold prior to the biggest move up in 30 years. And, you know, one of the hardest things about getting long at that bottom was it took, you know, some days before the silver finally started going up, you know, it was kind of hanging around near the lows, just like we are at the moment. And then all of a sudden it burst to life and you couldn't catch it after that. So, um, I'm kind of feeling the same way because, you know, you have to ask yourself, why Why did the nugget, which is basically a proxy for the gold stocks, trade 80 million shares yesterday in an, almost an all-time record high for the, for the nugget? Um, and the only reason, and it probably is an all-time record high dollar-wise, because I think the last time it had a very big day, slightly bigger, um, it was at a lower price. It might have been at eight or ten or even two before it got split or something. So the, 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 there's a you know somebody must have been very short this nugget and covered huge and bought a bunch of it yesterday because we had an all-time record day, practically speaking. So and, that's and are the any first. Any of the other ones that you follow, like uh, uh, the J Nug? Did anything else? Oh, all all, all of the goals. All of all, everything. All yeah. of the goals are look they all two days in a row they they opened lower yesterday morning and they reverse right away in key reversals they opened lower this morning and they reversed up you know not necessarily right away but fairly soon after the open and they're going higher today and i'm telling you the gold stocks look pretty bullish here they look like they could really move and the dusts which have been going up for about three to three or four days now uh, topped out this morning, and we basically put sell the dust and buy the, the buy the golds and the nugs and the metals this morning, and the so far that's worked out just great. Uh, the the J dust has fallen from fifty four thirty, more or less where we put this out, fifty two seventy five. That's quite a big fall. If you look at the chart, uh, they really look. And if, if you look at this dust every time it's sort of had a couple of red days which is basically what's happened here uh you, you've had a significant decline you've got if you look at newmont mining it's put in two enormous tests that have so far held 
um, you know, there could be a little bit of a pullback tomorrow, maybe Friday, because of this Fed testimony. The other thing that happened a couple, about an hour ago is the there was a news flash that the Fed chairman uh, said that you know the key, the trick is, if you like, or the key is to raise rates slowly. That that kind of as soon as that happened, that's when the dollar started coming off. And this is what one would expect. So he, he's finally admitting, you know, he's giving a hint that he's got to raise rates. So the next time, you know, if if this trend continues and we really do start to rally with the, with the gold and we get, you know, we have a, you know, 10, 20, 30 dollar move to the upside and sort of get the, the structure back. Um, by the time the next Fed meeting rolls around, you know, it could be the key that could really turn this whole market, you know, substantially higher. So, you know, we're, listen, we're, it's, it's only a day, we're in day two right now, really, of a turnaround, day one in the metals, effectively. So, you know, I'm just kind of laying it out, what to watch for, and what you got to watch for now is strength in the metals. And the nugget is ticking higher, as the, actually, as we speak, and it put in a very good bottom uh, right, I mean, we, you know, look, I, you know, my speciality is picking tops, highs and lows, and I think I've done a pretty good job this morning. Um, as now, uh, by the way, uh, you know, you, you heard it here on this show. I mean, I think we've been more bullish on the economy than just about anybody out there. Uh, but the forthcoming growth that we foresee, you know, four percent this quarter, potentially, f possibly four or even five percent next quarter. This quarter, we're in. Sorry for the for the. Q2, 4%, Q3, you never know, could be 5%, Q, Q4 could even be 6%. Um, the two people have come out, I think the Fed is talking about very strong rates. Several people come out this morning. Uh, Kudlow, Kudlow came out, said uh, looking for very strong growth next couple of quarters. And another guy from, from uh, a big hedge fund, Citadel, I think, is saying that uh, extremely strong quarters coming in the next couple of quarters. So it's sort of baked in the cake. And then, you know, yesterday you had the Fed chief um, come out. And by the way, I think this guy's the best Fed chief ever. He, he, you know, the market's got confidence in him now because as soon as he opened his mouth yesterday, the Dow went up 100 points, a couple of hundred points almost immediately. And uh, that's, 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 that's pretty good. What, what in I think he's, do you like or do you think that people in general like about this guy? Because he, he explains things properly. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't, he's not a kind of a, uh, I, I don't think he's so much of a market manipulator like the last crew. Uh, you know, he's letting the market kind of do what it has to do. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think that, um, you know, he's, he's going to, I, I believe what I laid out, which is, you know, rate hikes potentially i think he, i think look I, I if i was the fed fed governor I, I think any any fed governor right now as he is doing would be very careful about raising rates too much given what happened in 2007 in other words from 2005 to 2007 they raised rates 18 19 times you know, gold doubled, great, great for gold, uh, um, which is what I think is going to happen again. But, you know, they killed the economy, <laughs> and nearly caused a depression. And uh, unfortunately, the Fed has a habit, you know, th if you look at all the previous cycles, a lot of times the economy runs out of gas of, of its own accord, you know, and I can prove that to you. The, the you know, uh, Greenspan, in 1996, you know, was talking about um, uh, what, what was his famous statement? Uh, about the uh, decade, a boring decade, a decade of anemia. No, 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 no. no. Uh, when he rational talked, exuberance. That was yeah, exactly. Right. So that was three years before the top, right? Right. The follow the following year, February of 1997, we we created three quarters of a million jobs in one month. That's never happened before. Um, that was three years before the. The market actually so the fed called it called the top four years ahead right uh the, the, then the jobs actually confirmed it you know the, the economy potentially peaked obviously when the when it created three quarters of a million jobs it never i mean i think the next 
jobs after that might have been 400 and then 300. It never, never, never got anywhere near that number again. So arguably the peak was, you know, several years before the market actually peaked in, in 2000. So the, you know, so why did the, why did the Fed, if the market was already peaking, you know, why did the Fed sort of kill the bull? If you like, you know, they, they'd already gored the bull, like, like in a bull ring, but they, they had to kill the bull, you know, <laughs> and when you kill the bull, you know, you had this, you know, the NASDAQ goes from 5,000 down to five, you know, to 800, 750 sort of thing, you know, 90, almost the depression could decline. So, you know, and we had the same thing happen in 2007 to 2009. So I think this Fed having done such an amazing job or the previous Fed, you know, having done an amazing job of guiding the economy and really, you know, getting the world growth to where it is today. And, you know, with the help of Japan and Europe and England and the UK and other central banks have done an unbelievable job uh, really to get to, to this point. Um, I think they're going to be pretty careful about killing the golden goose next time around, especially with a guy like Trump in the White House who has appointed this, you know, this Fed because he expects him to do the right thing, you know. So my bet is they'll, they'll continue to raise rates into next year, uh, but I think they might ease off possibly by the first or second quarter of next year, and they might actually start lowering rates. And this is not, you know, something new, nothing new, because in fact, in 1994, we had a year that's not unlike this year, which is where the market was going sideways, driving everybody nuts, um, right before it took off big time. Uh, you know, we, we remember we had a big run up from 1987, and then 1990, uh, January 16, 1991, beginning of the bull market, ran up to about 1994. Then we had a sideways correction for a year. And at the end of that year, the uh, the uh, sentiment was a, was lower than the depression. So the, the year of going sideways to down got, got people very, very negative. And that was a great environment for the next leg of the market to unfold, which is about 1800 point upwards into 1996 and then eventually run all the way to 11,000. So I think that's the big thing that nobody can foresee right now is having had a spectacular 10,000 point run, having had a two, two, two to 3,000 point correction in the Dow, uh, which is only a third, uh, um, the, or, or even a quarter. Uh, we're, we're setting up for a new breakout in the next, you know, sometime between now and the end of the year, that could take the Dow on a, on a multi-thousand point run to at least a 27.750, possibly even 30, and maybe even 33, you know, between now and 20, 2021 or so. Um, and that would be accentuated or amplified if the Fed, because by, by the way, in from 1994, after the Fed tightened, the Fed eased off in 1995, 1996, and 1997, I can't even remember when they started raising rates at the end of that cycle, but they were in an easing mode from, for the second part of the 90s. <clears throat> so the point being, if the Fed gets in an easing mode in uh, going into 20, which is what they would want to be doing before the ele next election, uh, and maybe even a stimulative no mode, you know, this mark, and given what the Fed German said yesterday, where he expects two or three years of growth continue we're going to break all records for uh, for a you know an up, a growth cycle <clears throat> and um, look another thing that's been going on have you seen this new uh, uh, flying machine called the black fly black flight i think it's a black fly i think it is black fly uh, no I think, uh, oh let's listen uh, you look uh, it's very interesting because the the uh, <clears throat> the um, uh, what's the word? Uh, the, the, aerod the aerodynamics. <clears throat> That's the one. Yeah. The aerodynamics. Play, play that plane. It's just awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah. The aerodynamics are of these uh, of what's You know, it's funny how completely different people in different parts of the world 
are coming up with <laughs> almost the same looking machine, right? And what's what the, 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 the this is a very, very interesting breakthrough in this device because first of all, it's been tested like 10,000 times and it's uh, very, very safe. I haven't had any accidents at all. It's completely computerized. Uh, you can learn to fly it in five minutes. Um, <clears throat> and, learn to fly it in five minutes. <clears throat> apparently so, yeah. And um, the, the, uh, the, uh, but it's very similar to the Lilium. You can play the Lilium after this. And I mean, the Lilium, li listen, this is a kind of a, so is this a prop, is this a prop driven plane? Yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of like a drone, but it's got the, the key is they the guy who invented it figured out how to make an incredibly efficient engine, an electric motor that just, you know, defies defies logic, kind of defies force and power. And this is the key. So these really relatively small propellers is able to fly this thing like no, yeah, nothing ever thing before. That I, that I first noticed was those tiny propellers. There's quite a few of them. Exactly. Now, the other on the other side of the world, you've got the Lilium, which has a similar, very similar kind of a thing, but more streamlined and a more aerodynamic looking, if you like. Uh, but, and by the way, when you turn those propellers on, I mean, if you're standing in front of them, you sort of get blown away. It's that, that powerful. Okay, here but comes the Lilium. Lilium, yeah, so the Lilium is... Uh, now this this other one only goes. It's not a very fast thing, and it doesn't have very good range. It doesn't go to twenty five mile range. This Lilium can go three hundred and forty miles an hour, and it's it's a sleeker and more plain looking kind of a device. But it's absolutely awesome. And I'm telling you that the the, the technology here we are in twenty eighteen. Only got a couple of years into the next decade, and I'm you know there's going to be a really uh, you know um, rapid development of these flying machines in the next few in the next few couple of years and I believe the next decade you know just like I said ter terrestrial transportation you know the improvement of terrestrial transportation is a big theme of this decade with better cars automated driving etc uh, right yeah I mean, oh it's fantastic uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's 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 all it's mesmerizing it's fantastic and um, but it's fast and it, look at the look at the way they have the rotors in it. You see, it's in the wing. It's it's very very smooth and streamlined. Uh, uh, kilometers per hour, top speed. Yeah, incredible, in incredible. Range three hundred so, kilometers. Exactly, exactly. I mean, look at it. It's just just it's just a, it's just fabulous. Now, the the this is going to lead to just incredible breakthroughs and and development. You know, we're just at the cusp of. Uh, you know the Wright brothers. It's a Wright brothers a hundred years later. It really is. You know this is this is a whole new thing. Look at look at these. See the little rotors. You see you see the, oh, the way it works. Let me bring, let me bring it back up. <laughs> there we go. Uh, oh, I. Yeah, this is going to spur development at a, at a phenomenal pace. It, and and look, what was the what was the thing about the twenties? What made the Roaring Twenties? You know, at one time there were probably 120 car manufacturers in the U.S. You know, until there was a big shakeout. The depression really shook out all the all the wannabes and left us with General Motors and Chrysler and the big boys, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's going to be a gold rush of of innovators and developers building all kinds of flying machines and automated vehicles and everything that's coming. And you know, the next decade is going to be all about aerospace. And celestial breakthroughs and space, you know, it's it's going to be it's going to be the, a, a revolutionary decade. It's going to be like the the sixties, you know, two point zero. And uh, it's it's this is it's really exciting because the the tech, the technology, you know, imagine if these two companies got together, how what you know how they could potentially refine. You know, remember a lot of this early stuff when it first comes out is pretty rudimentary, but it gets right. better and better, and that's where we are right now. I mean, you know, as I said, I think I, de I, I declared, was it April? I think it was April this year that I, I said that was kind of like a Wright Brothers month, you know, where where all of a sudden six or seven flying machines all came out of nowhere, and so you know, there's a lot of a uh, lot of amazing things in, in the pipeline. It says the Blackfly has an intuitive control system that anyone can learn to use. 
There's even an autopilot system that can land the vehicle in an emergency or transport you home. The design is modular with three backup control system. Opener says Black Fly Opener. Is that the company that's that's making it? Uh, Black Fly has so. performed perfectly across 40,000 propulsion system tests and 12,000 miles flown. Yeah. Single seat vertical takeoff, which is a prerequisite uh, because most of us don't have a runway for a driveway, it says. There's a fixed wing at the front and rear of the vehicle, each with a bank of four propellers to provide both lift and thrust. Hmm. Yeah, and by the way, the, you know, there's a new electric bicycle uh, coming out of Croatia. I think it's called the Grunner. And this is a pretty cool, cool looking thing too, you know. And then you've got these, you know, this big revolution going on with these scooters, you know, these electric scooters. That's another thing that's going on. Um, you know, there's really... Is the Gruner? Yeah, Gruner. That's it. G-R-U-N-N-E-R. -N -N -E yeah. Now, what is this? What does this do? It's an electric bike. Okay. Extreme range, uh, providing extreme range of 350 kilometers on a single track. Can you believe that? <laughs> It's, un it's unreal. Bike to bike communication via fast 3G internet connection, which enables you to race your friend in any part of the world. Wow, well, that's clever. Smartphone control. Now you can use your bike like a gadget. Just connect it with your smartphone and take control over your adventures. Wow, this is uh, and what are one of these uh? Now I take it the bikes the bikes are available for order now, correct? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But the, uh, the black fly, what, where's that? Uh, it's not, so, it's, not, it's coming. Uh, it's uh, later this year. I think it's going to be, uh, it's classified as a power, as a light ultralight vehicle right now. <clears throat> Middle East Africa. This groomer. Order, order, order. I guess you got to call him. So any idea what the price is? Like, no, I, don't know. I didn't get, I didn't get into that. I mean, they'll be expensive at first, and then, you know, as competition comes about, they'll become more yeah. affordable, right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, it's, uh, so, you know, the market looks fairly solid today. I think this testimony is going to continue tomorrow, so it, it could mean another strong day. Um, and the Dow is sort of starting to break out here. It's gone up a th more than a thousand points, uh, you know, in about two weeks uh, since July the fourth or fifth, fifth, fifth or so. Um, so, uh, you know, all, all in all, things are looking pretty good. And it looks like, look, the dust are breaking down and new lows. The, 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 I'm not out, of, not out of not out of the woods on the dollar just yet, but it's sort of falling into place. Uh, incidentally, um, you know, this, this Twitter, you know, this Twitter has been taking people's followers away, including my, including our own. I had 20,000, 22,000 followers at one point and, uh, have been severely clipped, but, uh, most of my followers are pretty high quality people. And remember I, I told you how, how highly I thought of, uh, Scaramucci, Anthony Scar Scaramucci. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Started following me over the weekend. Oh, really? How about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I've got the number one financial commentator in the U commentator in the UK following me, David Buick, and also um, thanks. And uh, Dr. Gina, you know, you see her on Fox mm -hmm. every every now and again. Um, the real Dr. Gina. So it's uh, kind of com nice to have a few uh, people like that. Getting the, what getting the deal with all the people losing their followers. Why is that happening? What's going on? Oh, I don't know. This Twitter is it's just, uh, oh, you know, I, I guess there's some kind of policing their own ranks or something. I yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, because maybe there's people who you know, a lot of these celebrities with all these huge numbers may be getting bots or things to automatically create followers for them or something like that. Uh, I had another friend that girl gets paid, uh, the youngest <clears throat> Kardashian, uh, this is unbelievable. Well, number one, uh, if she mentions you or your product in a, uh, 
tweet, you have to pay her a hundred grand. That's her going rate. And yeah, she's yeah. almost a billionaire, and she's only twenty years old. And because people feel sorry for her, they've started a GoFundMe, and people are giving her money so that she can hit the billion dollar mark. Is that, that sounds like a. That that's almost like one of these pastors trying to raise money for another jet. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's uh, that's what's his name from Louisiana, uh, the guy with the nine hundred dollar loafers. He's funny. He's a, he's a real cut up. He, I like listening. I've listened to him for years. Uh, I can't think of his name though. Oh, uh, Jesse Duplantis. Uh, yeah, Joseph said it's a bot issue with fake accounts, and Alan says that he looked and the Gruner is seven thousand dollars. Wow, is it? Better? I didn't realize that. Oh, well, Jesus. I mean that's that's expensive, sure, but you know, as as it comes out and uh, as competition yeah. comes along, that price will yeah. will drop. Yeah. In in three in three years, it'll probably be more like seven hundred. Three to five years. Yeah. Did you hear about this ship? This Russian ship they found with the gold. No, no, what happened? <clears throat> uh, a Russian ship has off been discovered off the Korean coast. Uh, but uh, it's about a hundred years ago it sank was carrying 200 tons of gold worth about 150 billion and uh, they just just found it a couple of days ago <clears throat> ship found. We got wreck of the Russian warship found believed to hold gold worth 130 billion dollars now what will that do to gold prices well, I think down. that's, <laughs> it's funny, you know, the, the, the market kind of turned on that news. So it's almost like the, the you know, the market was anticipating the other markets done, you know, the market has a sense, six cents about things. And uh, it, I mean, it's obviously going to bring some supply on, but you know, 100, 200 tons is only a, it's like three, five percent of the, of the annual output. It's not that, not that big of a deal. It's about five percent. No, it's less than that. It's only three percent of the annual output, so it's not. Why was a not, warship not carrying uh, so much gold? Well, because they wanted apparently they wanted to avoid it being seized, or they, you know, they had something to do with the Japanese were trying to seize it or something, <clears throat> um, and that's what happened. So. And the Russian government gets gets fifty percent of the take. Yeah, I mean it's a pretty good deal for everybody, but you know, there's just uh, France. There was another. A ship found off Florida recently, a French ship, with a pretty sizable treasure and uh, um, in the billions. And France is claiming ownership of it. Mm -hmm. It was a French ship, so I don't know how that one's going to get resolved. How long have they been looking for this ship since it was allowed? I don't know. No, I don't know, but uh, it really is a jackpot with this one. It was sunk in a naval battle 113 years ago. Click on that uh, story about uh, Boris Johnson there, uh, number three. See, see what it says. Just, just, just go up a little bit, up the page. There, that. Uh, Boris Johnson says it's not too late to say Brexit. Okay. I hope he becomes the prime minister. It's going to lie. It's so boring right now over in England. I think if he becomes a prime minister, it's going to it's going to lie. It's going to it's going to liven things up. Yeah, uh, he savages Theresa May's Brexit plan. Uh, claims the government has dithered on Brexit. Yeah, and then and then it go, there's a paywall right here. So. Yeah. So a couple of other things: the the, <clears throat> the grains having the, they're gravitating higher, but they're not setting the world on fire at all yet. Uh, the cocoa got knocked down after this recent rally. The coffee rallied. Off, we we came down to one hundred seven and a half. Made a kind of a double bottom. It's uh, jumped up to one hundred eight today. So. So, you know, we did put a buyout on it at about 107 and a half this morning. Um, and uh, lumber is limit down. And, uh, it's, it's kind of weird because uh, I would have thought lumber would have, would have performed a little bit better, but apparently the housing starts came in bad this morning. So the lumber's limit down on the point of breaking 500 for the first time in uh, many months. 
so, you know, I would say, given its limit down, it's probably going to go lower the next few days. But it's it, if it gets down into the, you know, 475 area, somewhere like that, 460 to 475 is probably going to bottom and reverse up. And I'd consider going along when that happens because we're covering your shorts if you're still short. Uh, <clears throat> and, and reversing back long because uh, with the hurricane season developing, uh, you know, there might be some uh, still some upside in the lumber later on this year. And um, <clears throat> the uh, palladium, pal platinum is uh, at $10 off the low already today, almost. So that's saying something. The gold looks like it's going to take out these highs before the day's out. <coughs> so um, we're pulling back a little bit on the gold right now and bouncing a little bit on the dust. So we, that's a little bit risky. But if the if the gold stocks start heading heading back towards the day's highs, that fortifies the case for gold. But <coughs> the dollar is. Um, the, the dollar, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, the dollar is uh, just starting to pick back up a little bit here. So that's probably the reason why why that's pulling back. The other thing, oh look, this is very important. Uh, the VIX, I, I touched, I touched on this yesterday. <coughs> the uh, <coughs> the um, you know middle of January, the VIX bottomed around 25, 25 and a half. And it was uh, the tw it was already up several points by the end of by the twenty sixth, which was the top of the market. So uh, it bottomed a week to ten days ahead of the market, and then and it went from twenty five up to sixty five. The VIX has made a double bottom. It looks pr pretty dynamic here, and you know if we get a bit of a run into the end of the month on the market, which is one one could one could. Uh, certainly see if especially if some of these stocks come out with the better than expected results um then uh, you know and but we if we taper off going into into august the vix could could become a big deal <clears throat> and it, it certainly looks look if you were paying attention and obviously we were back in january because we were talking about this ahead of the ahead of the top <clears throat> The VIX was showed its hand before the market ever crashed, and the VIX took you know was already showing a very bullish kind of a activity um, and pro profile before before the market tanked, and I believe we could be you know in just at the very very earliest stages of something similar happening to the VIXs right now. No, no. This would be negated if we start heading back to the lows and start breaking down the lows the next day. That would be in a very bullish case for the market. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit longer, but or it might even go back and test the lows. Um, but I'm just saying, just to keep an eye on on the VIX now. And if it were to, you know, the, the, look, the VIX is a very tough thing to 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 play because it. Um, uh, but I mean, like. You know, even though we, I mean, we're not really setting the world on fire with any of these indices here in the last day or two. You know, we've struggled to go higher on the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ's already negative, down 15 today. The S&P's, you know, only, only slightly positive. And um, the Dow's, the Dow is sort of the last man standing. Um, and the tech uh, stocks, it's, they're down as well, negative, and the, and the LABU, you know, the, the medicals are down. So it's, and, and look, what was the symptom of the last top? The transports took off at the last minute, and the financials, you know, they were the last to fall. So, you know, we're, we're, we're actually, I'm not saying this is going to happen today, but we're in a kind of a dangerous situation. I mean, we, you know, even though the Fed, you know, whatever, the Fed might say something tomorrow that, is totally the opposite of Tuesday, right? Um, so, which could tank the market. So, you know, especially if he starts, you know, whether whatever it is he's going to say. So, you have to be prepared for that. I don't think that's going to happen, but I'm just saying it, it could. So, the, um, you know, the and I'll, I can guarantee you, if one of these things comes in negative, 
uh, one of these big big fangs like Google or Facebook, you know, misses, uh, or, or Amazon even misses, you know, that, that could have devastating consequences for the market pretty quickly. So, because remember, the, we're absolutely priced to perfection in this market right now. We're almost priced to beyond perfection. And that's a very dangerous place to be in. Um, because, you know, we if we do get a good decline, it could be very reminiscent of the January top. And in spite of everything, I mean, you know, well, great that the Nasdaq's making new highs and the mid cap, but the other indices have really been acting pretty poorly by, in comparison. And um, uh, you know, and but we're, and we will we'll just have to see you know, how, how things play out. Um, the other thing is this, you know, this European. I, I, I'm just surprised that Trump hasn't already kind of gotten on this one, you know, since he's so uh, been so hard on Europe, but I'm sure he's not happy to find that the European Commission has fined Google $5 billion for so-called monopolistic practices. I think that's just an absolute ripoff. Yeah, and it's the same, yeah. it's the same stunt they pulled on Microsoft, you know, a decade ago, or a couple of decades ago. You know, when, when Microsoft used to have its own um, Windows or something, you know, or, or browser. Bra exactly. Now they're saying that, you know, because they're throwing in Gmail with the package with the Android, it's unfair competition. Like, give me a break. Is that you what's know? over? I saw a headline. <laughs> is that, is that, that's yeah, something, 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 something like that. Something like Forcing that. Forcing yeah. the software onto. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So if if Trump gets into that war, you know he could be he could probably get a lot of Europeans companies getting fined and all kinds of tariffs hitting them, uh, you know, within a within a heartbeat. <clears throat> so. Mm -hmm. um, well, well, it's kind of quiet. Yeah. Oh, oh, the other thing is the oil. The oil has popped popped back higher. Oh, did it? Yep. And uh, rolled over to the U contract. How about you? Not yet. No, I didn't. I, I'll, I'll do that today. Okay. But um, so that's that's the news. Right, that's John, the day. Right. We'll thank okay. You so Thanks much. very much. We appreciate okay. it. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Same time. All the best. Bye. All right. Take care. Okay. All right. So everybody, we're in the merry old month of September. GCLU eight now on the crude. Uh, last night's concierge trade alert went out for the queue, but everything as of today rolls forward to the U. So here's a last look at the. Look at that. Incredible. Now, last night, let's see. Well, I'll tell you what, moving, rearranging your screens, it's like, uh, gosh, very discombobulating. So, last night, the final concierge trade alert on the Q contract was to consider buying 68.20, which is right here. And we hit it and a huge drawdown there. But we put in a high on the queue up at 068.45. Oh, All right, so that's it for the queue. Let me get this back on the September. Moving forward, moving forward. You currently trading sixty-seven fifty. Uh, on the S and P, we just finally triggered at twenty-eight seventeen to the upside, and we never triggered uh, on the move down. Missed it by a tick, which is good, and 
right above the weekly zone. These are the current weekly zones here, and so, you know, we pushed through finally. Try it, you know. Those are 30-minute candles, so you can count the hours. Tried to get through 28.17, couldn't get through. Pulled that little doji there, and now we should pull back into the zone. And if it confirms is good support, then we take a leg up to 28.25. However, it hasn't happened yet. We gotta see what this is just this range. And remember, I said at the beginning of the week from the work I did on Sunday night that it looked like this would be a really low volatility kind of week, and but it's about as flat as it gets. I don't think anybody wants to even talk about it because uh, nobody wants to return to that. Now, on the Dow, last night's alert said to consider being long 25 165. 25 165 which is right here and we put in a high up at 95 and so that works out to 30 Dow points and that's it and on the Russell we get any movement there so, my 1697 on, oh, no. Yeah, a little bit here, sell 1688 if the opportunity presents. And it did. Sell 1688. Guy with the chainsaw, what in the world is that all about? I assume you guys can hear it. Yep, we're gonna wrap here in just a second. 1688, and it took us down to 1680. Well, that's pretty good for the Russell. I mean, we got eight points out of that, so that's the maximum available. If you're trailing your stop, of course, you're always gonna leave a little something on the table. That's how that works. I already looked at crude, or I looked at gold, with the NQ, just flat, flat, and more flat. About as flat as it gets. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, and Alan, below that 92.93 is 27.83 slash 27.84. Okay. Our good word for the day your hiding place Psalm 32 7 have you ever fantasized about running away from all the stresses of today's high-tech world surely there is a place somewhere on the globe where the pace is slower and the living is easy now that dream motivated a family in 1940 to move to an island called Guadalcanal in the Coral Sea. But two years later, war broke out in the Pacific and the couple found themselves witnessing a battle in their front yard. Obviously, they had chosen the wrong place. Where can you go to escape the noise and hubbub of city life? How about a small island in the Caribbean called Grand Cayman? Vacationers to this resort say it is the closest thing to paradise on earth. The residents pay no taxes, the water is calm and warm, and there are orchids growing everywhere. Sounds good, right? But there's a catch. Medical studies reveal that the two major ailments suffered by citizens of Grand Cayman are hypertension and anxiety neurosis. Well, wait a minute. Hang on. They pay no taxes. The water is calm and warm. Orchids grow everywhere, but the two major ailments suffered by the citizens of Grand Cayman, according to medical studies, hypertension and anxiety neurosis. Life on a tropical beach is not always what it appears to be. Could it be that the stresses and pressures with which we struggle actually come from within? Uh-oh. The answer is yes and they will plague us no matter where we live 
until we learn to deal with circumstances as they are. When I joined the Navy at 17 and the recruiter said, where do you want to go? And I said, as far away from this town as I can get. He spun the globe by his desk, said, how about Japan? I said, great, let's go, let's do this. A few months later, a boot camp behind me, I land in Japan, and guess who the first person is that I meet? Now, going to Japan, the other side of the world, a small town boy from Georgia doesn't expect to run into anybody he knows, of course, but the second I step off the plane, they're waiting for me on the tarmac, Dwayne. Yeah. See, I thought I was getting away from all my problems and troubles and teenage angst by changing my zip code, but changing your zip code never fixes the problem. Because the problem's not out there. I mean, it can be, right? I mean, if you're living in a war-torn country, but for most of us, like the citizens of the Grand Cayman, uh, the problem's inside. The stresses and the pressures with which we struggle are inside, not outside. And no matter where we go, no matter how beautiful, no matter how serene, no matter how peaceful, no matter where we live, until we learn to deal with circumstances as they are, Here's how the psalmist did it in Psalm 32, 7 and 8. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. That's a good word for the day. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in today. Whoever you are, wherever you are, may God continue to richly bless you with his mercy and with his grace. And I'll see you. Remember this, there is no greater return on investment than to see a human life changed and given hope. As always, pray hard and trade safe. Any financial information discussed on this show is simply the opinion of our host, Dwayne Reeves, his co-hosts and guests. To learn more about trading e-mini futures or to take a one-week free trial in our live trading room, call 1-866-928-3310. 866-928-3310. Information discussed on this radio program should not be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Always do your own due diligence and consult with a licensed securities broker or financial planner before making any investment decisions.